hello everybody welcome back to the channel um, got a lot of work to do on my Yukon adventure series in some sort of horrible video convergent nightmare right now but I there is end in sight so I'm getting through that and in the meantime I wanted to dig up some awesome footage from a backpacking trip Tori and I did in 2017 where we walked 160 kilometers from Jasper to Grand Cache you can check that out in our playlist it's called Canadian Rockies backpacking adventure and this video is basically going to be all the little lessons we learned on the way so check it out and stay tuned because uh, we're gonna have some videos of us camping and slamming lake trout on Tomogamy in our new boat we're gonna have the Yukon videos out so lots of good stuff we're gonna keep pumping out and in the meantime enjoy our Canadian Rockies backpacking lessons lessons of the Canadian Rockies I guess that's what we'll call this so uh, hope you like it I'm just breaking out my tackle box here and I brought MEP spinners mostly. It seems to be good for the trout. There's a lot of cutthroat in here in these small, small mountain streams. Uh, another thing I brought is some small jig heads and small curly tail grubs. Nice size bull trout. And I also brought a small Williams spoon. The other thing I brought too is just this minnow lure. It doesn't hurt to have. And I also brought some small floats and some wet flies for float fishing. And that's when you basically put a bobber on, put a fly at the end of your line, cast into the current, into an eddy line, and just let it float down. And I keep it all just in a little Tupperware like that. Another nice pull. I pulled out what seems to be a nice sized bull trout. Bull trout are protected here, so I'm going to let this one go. So one of the things that you get when you come to these meadow areas is a lot of the other kind of herbs and shrubs and wild edibles basically that you're not going to get where there's a ton of trees. This is yarrow here. You can tell by these kind of wispy leaves on it. The yarrow is actually edible, but it's also medicinal. You can make a poultice out of it, which is just you crush it up and you put it on a wound. Uh, you can also make a tea out of it, a strong tea, and soak a wound in it and it'll draw out the infection. Another one that we have here is dandelion greens. And these actually have a lot of iron and they're as healthy as even broccoli or spinach. Clover flower. You can make a tea out of that. We have some small plantain as well. They usually grow much bigger, but um, that's edible too. It kind of has um, a bit of a peppery taste to it. It's not bad. There's probably more here too, but that's just since I've sat down in the last you know, minute just within arm's reach. So this is a, a really good spot for edible and medicinal wild plants right here in this uh, meadow that we're in, which is kind of cool. Parachute cord is a great thing to use to hang your food at night, especially while you're backpacking because it's so lightweight and it's a lot less bulky and lighter than carrying rope with you. It's also great for rigging up a tarp, things like that, but it can become kind of a pain when you have to untangle it. So this is how I store it and it's a good little trick that'll work with any kind of cordage. And we're gonna start just making figure eights between our thumb and we're going to leave like this little tag end out here and just going to go back and forth like this. Now I'm going to bring this one under here and through here in the opposite way and then I'm just going to tie these two things together. There we go. Now that's manageable, it won't tangle when I want to get to it and I can just easily throw that in the pack so good little trick there to store parachute cord. We are in grizzly bear, black bear and mountain lion country here so 
hanging our food is an important thing. So what we're bringing is parachute cord because it's a it's lightweight but it's strong. I've tied the parachute cord to a rock because a stick could get tangled up there and then you'll lose your entire rope. So I use a rock because it breaks through and it doesn't get tangled as easily. This is the tree branch we've decided to use up there. So here we go. So I'm just gonna do a bowline knot in this because they're easy to untie and it creates a fixed loop like that. Just tie it off to a couple of these nubs here in this tree. So uh, we're away from our tent right now. If the black bear really wanted to get this, it probably could, but the fact that it's up high means it's a lot harder for them to smell it. So I feel confident that we're gonna be safe, so we'll be able to sleep more soundly tonight. physically demanding to be out here on the trail doing these things you can't train your body without training your mind because you know our breaking point is a lot further on than where we think it is as you keep pushing yourself further you really need to get a grasp on the mental aspect of telling yourself you can do more and pushing through that discomfort and also just finding ways not to think about it and that's a really big help when you're out here doing this kind of thing and that's definitely what we're doing right now. So I'm trying to dry my boots out. Good thing to do is take the insoles out, dry them out, but it's definitely very hard to dry out near the toe of the boot. One thing I like to do is get some hot rocks. I just shove those in the fire and then just gonna shove those right into the toe of my boot. Wet feet day after day wreaks havoc on your feet, that's for sure. Hot rocks in the toes of your boot. Get some dry. <laughs> 